Fairy Tales from the Fairy Trail, Miles 1825.1 to 1900 point six. Unfortunately, I was forced to enter the White Mountains alone. My companion for the last 1,000 miles, the woman who can hear the music of the world and the fairies fell ill, and I had to stay behind. Over, However, I was not afraid because we had been separated before, and she had always caught me, and this would not be any different. Still, it was not a situation that I relished, because of the nature of what I was about to attempt. The White Mountains are a wall on the border of the Last Kingdom, a wall that leads to a gate in the form of a canyon in the mountains. It is a dangerous land where the spirits have no bounds, and I was attempt to attempt it alone. And so I set out, climbing the highest peaks I had yet to climb, seeing the wildest creatures I had yet to behold. But it was neither the difficulty of the hike, nor the strangeness of the ni nymphs that gave me the greatest difficulty. It was the satyrs and the gnomes. The land was beautiful beyond words, the magic wondrous beyond description, labyrinths of wa rocks, walking through clouds, lakes on the peaks, and the highest summit of the entire mountain range, were all wondrous and exciting to behold and experience. But in between these wonders were the huts. Small cabins nestled in between the mountains, where us travelers were forced to lodge or risk the displeasure of the fae. The gnomes and satyrs who operated these lodgings claimed that they were operating on behalf of the elves, whose duty it was to guard and maintain the trail. Unfortunately, the only thing these maintainers seemed to be doing was taking a traveler's money and spending it on nicer lodging. The planks over the marshes were rotting. The way over the mountains was dangerous because it went straight up and down over the sharpest and sheerest rocks with no stairs or ladders in sight. And while the gnomes and satyrs were cheerful, helpful, and joyous while we were within their sight, every time I handed them money so that I could have shelter from the wind, cold, and storms, I had the distinct impression that I was being swindled. My only balm was that I had never been anywhere more beautiful or more magical and now we have crossed the first obstacle, and the end is in sight. I stepped onto the fairy trail and stepped onto a fairy tale, and though my name was lost to me, I found my path clear and free. So now there is nothing left to do but walk a mile in another's shoes and hope to find what was lost to me, the mountain lord, my way to keep until I find my way back home where I might live, true and known, forevermore, forevermore.